This is a monument of the President and the General in Chongjin City, the provincial capital of North Hamgyong Province in the northeast of the DPRK. And here's another monument to guerrilla soldiers in the far northern city of Hyesan. From commemorating fierce military conflicts and guerrilla campaigns to national figures and political meetings, the DPRK has long used monuments to celebrate all different aspects of their history and culture. In 2021, I made a video about the monuments across Pyongyang, which is home to some of the most notable and well-known, so I recommend watching it. But this video is about something different. The various monuments and statues located outside of the capital, some in the centre of cities, and some seemingly in the middle of nowhere. These are the DPRK's monuments explained. This video wouldn't be possible without my backers on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you'd like to join and help support DPRK Explained. The first thing to cover is terminology. In this video, I'll use the term monument broadly to describe statues, towers, and commemorative complexes, the most common of which are these, towers of immortality and murals of the great leaders. The DPRK has over 5,000 of these towers, located in every town, village, farm, and other population centers in the country. The design is inspired to some extent by traditional East Asian pagodas, and each tower has a message inscribed on its face. This tower, for example, is located on Sungni, or Victory Street in Pyongyang, and reads, Widehan Kim Il-sung Dongjiwa Kim Jong-il Dongjinun Yongwoni Uriwa Hamkye Geshinda, or The Great Comrade Kim Il-sung and The Great Comrade Kim Jong-il are always with us. These towers will often be located in prominent places in the town or city, whether that be near the central square, around an official community building, or, as is the case in the capital, at the gateway to new streets and developments. On the other hand, murals are dotted throughout towns, cities and the countryside, often depicting something relevant to their surroundings. Murals in schools and universities may depict the great leaders working alongside children, whilst countryside and farm murals will often be themed around agriculture. Other murals often depict revolutionary images such as workers, farmers, soldiers or other patriotic imagery. The country has a higher classification of monument reserved for the three most important commemorative installations in the country. They are the Mansude Grand Monument in Pyongyang, the Samjion Grand Monument in Nyangangdo, and the Wangjesan Grand Monument in Hamgyongbukdo. These three are classified as Dekinyongi, or Grand Monuments, and are dedicated to, in order, the eternal President Kim Il-sung, 
and the Eternal General Kim Jong-il. The revolutionary guerrilla campaign fought against the Japanese imperialists in the 1930s and 40s. And the Wang Jaisan Conference, which took place in 1933. In the Pyongyang Monuments video, I covered the Mansude statues in Pyongyang. If you want to find out more about these 22 meter bronze statues, go check out that video. Ideally, after this one. Most major cities in the DPRK have these monuments dedicated to the DPRK's leadership, and they serve as focal points for celebrations on important holidays, and are also visited by couples on their wedding day, foreign dignitaries, as well as ordinary locals and visitors. I especially noted most major cities rather than all major cities, since there are two specific examples that I'll get onto later. The next grand monument on our list is this, the Sanjion Grand Monument. I've covered the city of Sanjion in an edition of DPRK Cities, and during that video I touched briefly on this monument. The Grand Monument at Sanjion is in fact a complex made up of multiple statues and monuments. The centerpiece is a bronze statue of a young, then general, Kim Il-sung. Either side of this stand two statues depicting soldiers of the Korean People's Revolutionary Army. On the southwestern side of the complex stands a 50 meter tall torch statue, and on the northeastern side, a marble statue of a bugler surrounded by military revolutionaries. In addition to these statues, standing on a rock on Lake Sanji, which sits beside the monument, is a statue cluster of courageous revolutionary fighters. This monument, opened in 1979, commemorates the guerrilla forces based in the region during the 1930s and 1940s. At this time, Korea was under Japanese rule, having been forced into becoming a colony of the ever-expanding imperial ambitions of the Japanese government in Tokyo. Northern Korea and Manchuria were both hotbeds of anti-Japanese guerrilla action, and the headquarters of the Korean People's Revolutionary Army was nestled in the forests surrounding Nampektu. The specific spot next to Lake Sanji was chosen due to its provenance during the anti-Japanese campaign. During the famed Battle of Pochombo, which we'll get to in a minute, soldiers of the Revolutionary Army crept across the Manchuria-Korea river border and rested beside the crystalline waters of the lake before beginning their assault against the nearby Japanese positions. The final Grand Monument is the Wang Jaisan Grand Monument. It's also the most remote of the three and perhaps the most remote in the entire country. Situated up here, near the village of Onsong, mere metres from the Tumen River, which serves as the Sino-Korean border, sits a huge, monolithic monument depicting the torch and flame of the Juche idea and a young President Kim Il-sung alongside celebrating Korean comrades. Behind the main monument stands two large bronze castings, showing Korean revolutionary fighters and ordinary locals. The monument was built to celebrate the 1933 conference which happened on this spot. The nearby Wang Jaisan Revolutionary Museum recounts the events of this conference when, on the 11th of March 1933, the anti-Japanese guerrilla forces led by the general marched back into the Korean homeland and held meetings with the chiefs of various underground resistance organisations. The monument commemorates not just the meeting, but how this conference would go on to energise the resistance movement across Korea. First, we'll start with two connected monuments, both commemorating the Battle of Pochombo, one of the most significant events during the anti-Japanese guerrilla campaign. The Battle of Pochombo occurred here, in a small village near the border between then Japanese-occupied Korea 
and Japanese-occupied Manchuria. Overnight, on the 2nd of June 1937, guerrilla soldiers of the Korean People's Revolutionary Army crept across the border and into Korean territory, and on the 4th of June, they launched their attack against the village of Pochombo, used by the Japanese military as a strategic border post. After the swift ambush, the President Kim Il-sung reportedly made a speech to the local townspeople, the site of which can be visited should you ever take a trip to this region of Korea. The town itself is the site of a large bronze statue of the president which overlooks the buildings, many of which are original and remain bullet scarred from the battle. There is also a marble monument alongside the statue, emblazoned with the words Pochombo Chontu Chihuito or Battle of the Pochombo Command Center. However, this isn't the only monument to the historic battle. Ten miles away, sits the capital of Nyangang province, the city of Hyesan. The city sits on the border with neighbouring China, and even if you're not in the country itself, the monument in Hyesan, dedicated to Po Chombo, is visible even from the other side of the river. Po Chombo Chontu Sungni Kinyon Tap, or the monument to the victory of the Battle of Po Chombo, depicts a crowd of Korean revolutionary soldiers following behind the President Kim Il-sung, all below an enormous red granite flag. This monument sits just a few metres north of the previously mentioned statues of the leadership, which are situated in every major city in the country. Staying in the northern area, let's look back at the 3rd of May 1939. Actually, before we do, maybe it's worth mentioning why the map of monuments we're focusing on looks like this, when the DPRK looks like this. Well, many of the most significant monuments in the country are based on some of the most important events in the nation's history. For the DPRK, a country formally proclaimed in 1948 after the overthrow of an occupying power, Many of these events revolve around said overthrow. Many of the skirmishes against the Japanese took place in the forests and mountains of northern Korea, where such operations were more effective. And so that's why there's such a cluster of monuments and revolutionary sites in this region. This area is the county of Taeongdan, and is characterised by wide open plains. At least, wider and more open than most of northern Korea. In 1939, two years after the skirmish at Pochombo, the Korean People's Revolutionary Army once again engaged in combat against a garrison of Imperial Japanese soldiers. It was said that at this point, the Japanese were confident that the Korean guerrillas no longer existed as an effective fighting force, only to be disavowed of this view quite quickly. The site of this battle is marked with the monument to victory in the Battle of the Musan area. The monument, erected in 2002, depicts a bronze statue of the then General Kim Il-sung wielding binoculars with his arm outstretched, standing in front of a 40 metre high stone obelisk in the shape of a bayonet, reminiscent of the monument at the victorious Fatherland Liberation War Martyrs Cemetery which I covered in the Pyongyang Monuments video. There is also an enormous bronze casting depicting the battle against the Japanese. This scene shows the events of the conflict and even depicts the comrade Kim Jong-suk directing soldiers during the action. This brings us neatly back to a point I alluded to earlier. Earlier in the video I made the point that most, but not all cities, had the customary statues of the President Kim Il-sung and the General Kim Jong-il. There are two exceptions. The first I've discussed before in my Sanjion video, as it is indeed Sanjion. This city is located near the Pektusan secret camp, the official birthplace of the general Kim Jong-il, and so it is his statue alone which graces the city centre. The other example I have not discussed, and as you may expect, it is the hometown of comrade Kim Jong-suk, the first wife of the president, 
and a respected revolutionary within Korea, who reportedly fought against the Japanese in the lead-up to the liberation of the country, and sadly died soon after liberation was achieved. She was laid to rest in Pyongyang at the Revolutionary Martyrs Cemetery, which I also mentioned in the Pyongyang video. Her hometown, the city of Kwerdyong, is so inextricably linked with the so-titled anti-Japanese revolutionary heroine that the statue in the heart of the city is of Kim Jong-suk, standing behind a harvest of crops whilst wearing her military battle dress and cap, and armed with a pistol. As with other statues across the DPRK, the people of the city visit the statue on important holidays and celebrate significant events at the statue of the revolutionary daughter of Huayong City. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you liked this video, I think you'll enjoy my video about the monuments of Pyongyang. I've certainly mentioned it enough in this video and it was difficult to stick to the topic since I know I'd already covered some of the most famous sites already, so please do go and check that out. I mention it in every video, but this channel would not be possible without the support I get from my patrons on Patreon. So if you've been enjoying the videos I've been making, please go and check that out and consider supporting the work I do here. It really, really means a lot. If you enjoyed the music, then I've linked to a playlist on my second channel, which keeps a record of all the music I use in these videos from various different sources, so that's the place to check if you enjoyed a piece of music in this video. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas for topics you'd like me to cover, then please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.